Are you recording? Yes. Good morning. Called to preach. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, of the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along, check me out, make sure I'm telling you the truth, make sure I'm not lying to you. Be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Also, follow me along, make sure I'm not skipping a groove, you know, because the mouth goes faster than the brain sometimes. Check me out, okay? Follow me along, be a Berean. Okay. Um, this part, brother, is not in what I sent you. Okay. You know who I'm talking to. <clears throat> Luke chapter 24, verses 44 on to verse 48 to begin. And he said unto them, this is after the death, burial, and resurrection. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must, must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, the Torah, the first five books, and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. There's your canon of Old Testament scripture. Then opened he, the Lord, their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and the spirit of truth he shall guide, lead you into all truth okay and the lord is that spirit our father our lord jesus christ and said unto them thus it is written and thus it behooved christ to suffer and to ra rise from the dead the third day <clears throat> and that belief and re <coughs> you want guy you weren't expecting that were you just keeping you on your toes. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Egypt. Oh, excuse me. Beginning at Jerusalem. To the Jew first. And also to the Gentiles. And ye are witnesses of these things. Now, in the Great Commission, our Lord says what? Go ye and teach all nations, all right? And we all know that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But how does a man, how does a man know that he has been called to preach? <laughs> <laughs> I remember listening to several people in the past, like, you know, established preachers, as it were. Seems to be from either the Baptist uh, persuasion or the charismatic persuasion of, you know, Ah, oh, boy, you done been called preach, huh? Yeah. Or uh, I heard before with my own ears that I knew that at 11 years of age that I was called to preach the gospel. <laughs> really? So at 11 years old, I'm not making that up. That's not, you know, for sake of proof, uh, getting a point across. I've heard that before. I knew that from the age of 11 years old, I was called to preach the gospel. Yeah, at 11 years of age, that you really still get confused on what uh, uh, part of your drawers face to front. And yet you, at 11 years old, know you've been preached to call the, uh, preach the gospel. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the question comes, how does a man, how does a man know that he's been called to preach the gospel? Well, let's first start off right away the obvious that there are no such um, smoking gun, bells and whistles that tell a man that he has been called to preach the gospel, Okay. There's nothing like uh, bells or whistles coming down from heaven, you know, hallelujah, that kind of nonsense. No. Um, the proof that it is the Lord that has called you is in the longevity, in the fruit. 
that comes of it. <clears throat> and um, that is how, that is how. When you hear from people that they got right with the Lord and came to the Lord and he saved them by something that the Lord gave you to speak, then you know. When it's about one person, whoever you are, who may hear something and come unto the truth, and the truth is who? Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. That is how. That is how you know. But before we get into more scripture, I have to acknowledge publicly, once again, because unfortunately, when you do, when you are called to the position such as this, and you have talked about something in the past, unfortunately, the mindset of people who are basically here on YouTube, you're only as relevant as your newest video. Now that is not, of course, the case for the Church of the Living God, but most people who will happen upon a video or something, uh, apparently, um, this, the videos that the Lord has given me are not appearing in searches anymore like they once did. <laughs> that explains quite a few things. I've been told, it's like, you know, yeah, Brad, you know, um, any of you who, Rabbit, any of you who upload videos, you know, they you got the tag thing in the bottom when you're uploading them. Apparently, in the past, when you would uh, type in a, a, a word in your, on YouTube, like Jesuits, uh, apparently some of the videos, like the videos that the Lord have given me exposing the Whore of Babylon, um, some of the videos like that have come up. Or, um, for example, also Repentance and stuff like that. And um, Separation. Certain videos had come up in searches um, and YouTube when you would put a certain word in. Apparently that's not happening anymore. So, But anyway, when you are called to this position, there are certain things. It's more than just putting a video together. It's more to it than that. But before we begin, I have to do what James chapter 5 talks about. In verse 16. James chapter 5 verse 16. Confess your faults, not trespasses, not sins, Catholic. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, what was it? Maybe about two years ago. And I've talked about this in videos before. Uh, a video that this was addressed in was called Fear, Paranoia, and Chaos, which I am not going to link in the uh, description box, okay? Because who knows? I mean, some, most people probably won't make it to this point. But if you do, check that video out where I talk about this uh, in the past. About two years ago, roughly, there was a, a dear young man, a dear young man, whom I... I had a part. I was not the only one. And remember, we have to make the right choices. No one holds a gun to your head, no matter what some of these Christians want you to believe or what the devil wants you to believe. No one is holding a gun to your head, okay? But I think it was actually two years ago, there was a dear young man, who I greatly encouraged to get into preaching, okay? And he did, and he did. And I was not the only one, okay? You who may see this who are, know what I'm specifically talking about, come on, you know I was not the only one. But my influence was the greater. Yes, it was. And this dear young man, he did. He, he got into preaching and um, uh, some of his videos 
were really, really good. Scripture was scripture. Rightly divided. They were. Can't, I mean, they were. They were really good. Some of them were really good. Really good. But see, truth can come from those who are not of us. Why? Because the scriptures speak for themselves. Okay? So you got people who are not of us who can put together really, really good videos, or most people call them sermons. Okay? Scripture upon scripture. Even upon, even a rightly divided uh, sermons, as they're called. But yet, they're not, they're, they're not of us. But see, that is because this is the word of truth. And the scriptures speak for themselves. But nonetheless, this dear young man, who I love, and who to this very day, I pray for. But see, there's far more to being in this position than this. Oh yeah, there's far more to it, okay? We are called to be ambassadors and we're gonna look at these verses. We got quite a bit of verses, but I have to tell this to you. But there's more to being in this position than just putting out videos or sermons as they are called. We are called to be an example. We are called to walk the talk and live of the gospel, especially when it's just you and the four walls and the Lord. Okay? And unfortunately, this dear, sweet, dear, sweet, dear young man was not ready. He was a uh, mid-20s, early 20s, something like that, but he was not ready. And there were warning signs of this. And, and as I have done this publicly before, okay? All right? And I saw them. And I turned a blind eye. When I should have been the one. Hey, what are you doing? Okay? I should have been the one. And I wasn't. In that respect, I failed that young man. I did. And I have confessed this before. Okay? And I have asked publicly for forgiveness of this young man. Whether he has or not, that's between him and the Lord. I have done as I am called to do. Okay? But he was not ready. He was not ready. And a collapse happened. And it was tragic. It was very tragic. And see, there are some to this very day who will antagonize that same young dear man to try to suppress him from ever reaching any potential that the Lord may have had for him. Okay? But see, that's what the enemy does. They want to keep you shackled. But see, that dear young man was not ready. And this is why in the scriptures you will you read about um, Timothy, for example. Paul says, let no man despise thy youth. Well, why did Paul say that? Because when you read about Timothy... What about Timothy? He was brought up in the scriptures. That from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Taught to him by his mother and grandmother. Okay, his, uh, Timothy's father was a Greek. Okay, But Timothy was brought up in the scriptures. So being brought up in the scriptures as children are supposed to be brought up today, by the time that a Timothy was in his mid-twenties, he was already rooted soundly in doctrine in the scriptures. So when he was saved of the Lord, okay, Timothy was well prepared being brought up into it, okay? So that's why about Timothy, okay? 
But see, there is so much more that is involved to being in this calling, who the Lord calls, that is beyond just putting videos together. Because, as, I mean, you look on YouTube. Uh, yes, okay? Yes. All I do is sit here, turn on the computer, plug in the microphone, and go as the Lord will have me. It's not some fancy schmancy production with 4K or computer generated backgrounds. It's like, well, I want high quality production. Oh, so you're here to please men, huh? Get out of here with that, okay? And <laughs> you look on YouTube, anybody can. Sit right here in a chair, turn on a computer, and speak things. Mm -hmm. And especially when you look online at that disgusting Christian book.com, there are hundreds, thousands of books on spirituality, and someone dives, especially in the commentaries and stuff like that, uh, or they can go and get these computer programs that produce for you a sermon, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, so there's a lot of devices out there that Satan has created that a false convert or someone who wants to, of his own behest, to be in a position of authority so that he may have something. Um, there are many things out there, but see, it is of the Lord who calls us to this, okay? It is of the Lord. And like I said, I brought up that dear young man because I failed. I was wrong. I greatly encouraged some dear, sweet young man who was not in any way ready for the responsibility in being in a position. What you see is this, but what the Lord sees is far beyond what you see. And in that, unfortunately, that dear young man was not ready. And again, publicly, I take my part in the fault of that, okay? No one held a gun to his head. I was not the only one, okay? I was not. And those of you who want to come up and say that I was, you lying. You're lying, and you know it, and so does the Lord, okay? But that was a fault of mine. That was a fault of mine. And I, and again, publicly, because there is, an, uh, there is a possibility that that fine young man may see this. I love you. I still pray for you. I hope you get right with the Lord, and please forgive me, okay? But, okay? I had to mention that. I had to mention that. See, because when you're called to a position such as this, you're going to make mistakes. People make mistakes, brethren. Unless, you know, someone who's ultra holy and, uh, you know, brought up in Ruckmanism and stuff like that and whatever, and you, and you never make mistakes and blah, 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 blah. And see, when you're in a position of this, okay, when you make a mistake, you, um, <laughs> when you make a mistake, when you are in error and it is made known to you by the scriptures to the brethren, you are to, I believe, in this position, number one, and I've done this before. I have even taught error before about people who could just, you know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. I taught for a long time. Well, not too long. Well, yeah, for a long time that that was proof positive that someone was saved. And I was wrong. And the Lord showed me through the scriptures. Okay? Just because someone can utter, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. That only means that you can say that. That doesn't mean that you're saved. And see, I taught that. 
and I was in error. And I publicly confessed and repented of it. And you can see that in the videos if you want to look. I don't hide my mistakes. There are others out there because they have a prosperous ministry and they got to look good that when they make a mistake, they try to hide it and sweep it under the rug. Now, granted, there are certain things, there are things that, you know, ought to be um, kept between brethren. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the enemies of our Lord will take any flatulence and make it into a nuclear holocaust. Okay, yes, that is the truth, okay? But when you make a mistake of a magnitude of such, don't hide it. Because, okay, let me start it. Peter, he made mistakes, Catholic. Yeah, and besides, your Peter is not the Peter of Scripture. But Peter made mistakes, you read, in Galatians chapter 2, Okay? How he went with the, there's the one gospel to the Jew and one to the Gentile. He dissimulated with them because of the brethren that James uh, sent. And Paul had to rebuke him publicly. Okay. All right. Peter made mistakes, but yet we read the fruit of First and Second Peter. Paul the apostle made mistakes. Read Acts chapter 21. Okay. The Lord warned him, I don't go to Jerusalem. Three times. Okay, Agabus, the Lord said, uh, not Agabus, and then the guy with the belt and then the daughters or something like that. I believe it was three times. But Paul was warned, don't go to Jerusalem. And he went anyway. And also about Paul, you read Romans chapter 7. Okay, and yet Paul, even though he made mistakes, he wrote a majority of the New Testament. Okay. So, there is more to be, because unfortunately, we as man have no shortage of preachers. No, we don't. There are a lot of preachers out there. Oh boy, there are too many. But how many of them are actually called of the Lord? <laughs> I knew that from 10 years old, I was called to preach the gospel. You don't even know what side of your drawers face front at that age. And yet you've been called to preach the gospel. I've heard that before. Okay? Or at 16. Uh, you were a dang preacher at Steve Anderson. <laughs> I believe Steve Anderson was an ordained preacher at 16. <laughs> Give me a break. No. There are exceptions to that rule, you know. When you're, and also, you know, like it says in uh, Timothy, not a novice, lest he fall into condemnation of the devil. I have come across several novices here on YouTube who, you know, being patted on the head by their masters, who are doing their own thing now, but got so full of themselves, and then they attack saved people. Okay. But there is more to this calling than just doing this, okay? But see, there is something that we are all called to. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We are going to be reading... Uh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What am I... Yeah, verses 18 on to verse 20, Okay? When you come to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, manning up, taking accountability and responsibility for what you did, that you put the Lord on the, cro on the cross, you can't say, well, it was someone else's fault, okay? No one held a gun to your head. You were the one who put Christ on the cross. And then in fear of him, you called upon his name and he saved you. He seals you until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. And you are a new creature because he lives within you permanently, okay? And because of that, verses 18 on to verse 20 in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, okay? And all things are of God who hath reconciled us, we who are saved, the called. The called are we who go the way of the cross to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? 
The called for today in this dispensation are the called of the called way, the chosen way of the cross that the Lord chose. Okay? And see, one too many people want to boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. Okay? But, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us, the saved, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us, the body of Christ, the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the <laughs> word of reconciliation. Now then, we, male and female, bond or free, Jew or Gentile, barbarian or Scythian, Republicant or Demokami, white or black, it doesn't matter. In salvation, salvifically, we are one in Christ Jesus. Okay? So, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, the body of Christ, the church of the living God. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Now, man, woman, demokami, republican, white, black, chartreuse, okay, Jew, Gentile, barbarian, Scythian, okay, it doesn't matter. In salvation, we are all one in Christ Jesus. There is no distinction in uh, salvation today. Okay? There isn't. All right? So, we, as the church of the living God, every single one of us, okay? I'm going to try to kick some of you in the rear end, okay, with some of this too. We all are in the ministry of, of reconciliation there are some of you out there and I do not mean this in the southern way bless your heart and soul I don't mean that in the southern way who are of us born again saved okay who aren't doing anything and you come up with excuses we have a responsibility. Number one, to the Lord who saved us. To walk according as the Lord hath called us. See, if you're not walking right and you, and you try to be in this calling, it's not going to work very well for you. But we are called. The call, the way of the cross, which is a way of death unto ourselves. We are called to be ambassadors for Christ. And that is, that goes beyond Jew or Gentile, male or female, Republican or Demokami, okay, white or black, all right? That goes beyond. We're all called to the ministry of reconciliation, okay? Even women, even women. Now, women are not permitted to preach or teach. You can read it. We're not going to look at these today, but uh, there will be a, in the description box the video, uh, Cold, Very Cold, okay, uh, where we talk about that. Um, and also, too, you look online here of how many of these women preachers, a lot of them come from the charismatics, and the ratio seems to be of hermetic women our dear sisters of Ham, okay? Yes, there are Japhethian women as well, okay? But a lot of the charismatic women seem to be of Ham for some reason, okay? That's just the fact. But see, a woman is not to preach or teach. That is for the man to do. You read about that in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 9 under verse 15, and of course, 
1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 13. You look that up yourself. And then 1 Corinthians 14, verses 34 on to verse 37, which our brother Alexander Hartley, he did a really good video uh, talking about some aspects of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Please check that video out. Okay? Women are not supposed to be the preachers and teachers. But then you might ask, well then, Fred, how are we, how is a woman then supposed to be an ambassador for Christ? First Peter, okay? First Peter chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 6. Now, context, this is talking about a wife, okay? And there, there are some sisters out there, it's like, well, I don't have a husband. It's like, okay, maybe you don't. But see, this applies, if, it, if this only applied to a sister who is married, then what about a sister that is not? Huh? No. 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 The, the, what is being said here in Peter, also that implication is for a sister who does not have the head covering of a husband, but her covering is of the Lord, see? Okay? Uh, first, pretty, first Peter 3, verses 1 on verse 6. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. Now, see, he's talking specifically about wives. But see, if that didn't apply to a sister that didn't have uh, a husband, then that would be a contradiction, wouldn't it? Okay? By being chaste. Okay? Obeying what the Lord has said in the scriptures for us today to walk separate than that. See? Walking the talk walking according to the scriptures, okay? A godly woman amongst Christian women who are of this world, the women, the Christian women of this world, hate saved women, okay? Who are of the church of the living God because they, they want to be separate from that, okay? Well, Christian women... Wear things that, you know, show off their curves and stuff like that. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. So, yes, wives are what being, are, is what being addressed, yes. But this also holds for sisters who do not have a husband. Okay? Let's continue. Prove it to you. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Well, that's only for married sisters. What, are you, what sin are you trying to justify? Hmm? Sisters, supposedly. What sin are you trying to justify? Where so, well, that's only, for a say, that's only for married women, not for us single women. You need to examine yourself. Let's continue. Who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating of the hair, and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. Not dressing up the outside because the inside is full of dead men's bones. And some of and I've dealt with this before. That's only talking about married women. Keep smoking what you smoke. Okay? Because it came out of the rear end of an animal. Okay? But let it be the hidden man of the heart. The hidden man of the heart. Who's the hidden man of the heart? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? And that which is not corruptible. And even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, of great price. So, okay, again, there are some that will argue, well, that's only for married women. You just go away. What sin are you trying? Because you will have no man to rule over you. A woman, a sister, especially, married or not married, you're supposed to be of a meek and quiet spirit. Well, it's only for married women. The Lord rebuke you. What sin are you trying to justify? Okay? Women, sisters, are supposed to be of a meek and quiet spirit. Okay? But how can they be ambassadors for Christ? They're supposed to be of a meek and quiet spirit. When you got that, uh, what's that, uh, that um, 
um, Hermetic woman's name, um, Shriver, who preaches for Joel Osteen. Look at, call her the Joker. Okay, look at Paula White, who looks like she should be uh, in uh, Los Angeles or in the red light district. Okay? How is a woman going to be of a meek and quiet spirit when preaching as a one who is called to this position, you have to be gruff. You have to be a little loud and obnoxious sometimes to, uh, you know, because sometimes when you get people who are neck deep in sin and entrenched in their own ways, you got to take the sword and bash them pretty hard sometimes. But a woman, a sister, is supposed to be of a meek and quiet spirit. Okay? So how, as ambassadors of Christ, do they fulfill that calling that we all have? Being of a meek and quiet spirit for one, when the world is, especially in America, where feminism is being promoted to the front, and especially in these Christian women who dress like men, who smell like whores, okay? And here comes a lady, a sister, dressed like a lady of a meek and quiet spirit. Okay, you, you do the math yourself, okay? That's how a woman, and also a woman could put out tracks, okay? A woman could do the works that we are called to do upon the Lord saving us, not to be saved or stay saved or be right with God, but because in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 10, he has called, saved us and called us onto good works. What are those good works? Being an ambassador for Christ and living our lives according to the scriptures that we as ambassadors may be witnesses unto the lost world who most of the time don't want to hear what we got to say. So how do you witness unto these people? By walking and living your life according to the scriptures. Beyond the public spectrum. You only see what you see here. But I tell you, what you see here is what you're going to see when this is turned off. Okay? What are you doing? What do you like when it's just you, the four walls, and the ceiling and the floor? What do you like when it's just that and you and the Lord, huh? Hmm? Hmm? Verse 5, for after this manner in the old time, the holy women, holy being set apart and stuff like that, women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Okay? And also, Titus, chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 8. Okay? We, we have to hit this. We have to hit this, okay? Because, you know, we're all of the Church of the Living God called to the ministry of reconcili reconciliation, okay? When, you, when these Christians are being like the world going to movie theaters and there's no distinguishing, no um, distinction between a Christian and an atheist and those of the world, we of the church and living God, living our life in accordance with the scripture, most of the times you don't have to say, I mean, come on, you brethren out there, even you sisters, you've been out in public, you've, you know what it's like, it's like, People just get weird about you, and you don't say a word. Why? Because the Lord who is in you is contrary to he is who is in the world. Okay? That's how that works. And when we walk and live our lives according to the scriptures. Okay? But see, we're all called to that, that ministry of reconciliation. We're all called to that. Okay? But Titus chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 8. But speak thou the things which becometh that which become, excuse me, sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, which is self-sacrifice, in patience. <sighs> patience, yeah. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. 
Not false accusers. Uh, notice that it doesn't say wives, aged women. Okay. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, <laughs> nor given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. And you look at the feminazi Christians of today, these women preachers. Yeah, you, you see, you call her the joker. You see these women preachers in these satanic phallus houses. Okay, that's got to give him his due for coming up with that term. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. What example are they giving on to the younger women to rebel against what God has said? That's what they're doing, okay? That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. And see, when women take the role of preaching and teaching, they are actively usurping what God has said and putting themselves above man. Okay? And if you got a problem with that, your problem ain't with me. It's with what God says. So what do you do? You go and find a Bible that twists uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 13. And you can find a Bible like you read the message. You read the non-King James Version, the New Revised Standard Version. Blah, but you read one of them. Oh, they all say different things and use gender-neutral pronouns. Okay? You can find a Bible where that can justify virtually any sin you want. But see, when it comes to the scriptures, you're without excuse. Okay? And see, when a woman is up there in a the pulpit, okay, they're blaspheming God, the word of God. Because they're doing contrary to what he said. But also, verse 6, young men likewise also, young men likewise exhort to be sober minded in all things, shewing thyself a pattern of good works, not to be saved or stay saved, but that we may walk as ambassadors of Christ according to the scriptures for us today. And not only when all eyes are upon you. You see? In doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. And when you make a mistake, publicly confess it. And leave it for people so they can see. That they may see that it's not you. But if anything comes right out of anything you say, it's of the Lord. Not because you got a fancy schmancy ministry with all the high tech gadgets and you got a reputation to uphold. What about the reputation of the Lord? Does that mean anything to you? Hmm? Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. And you know how in James he says, let us not be many masters, for we will give a... Let's go there. This one isn't in the notes either, brother. I, send the, I sent the notes, uh, these notes that I'm working off of onto a brother of ours, because he was the one who asked this. And, uh, and so, yeah, there are a few things here. Go to James. James chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. I'm going to have to stand before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for every single word I have ever said to you. You think this is easy? Anybody, yes, can turn on the camera and sit here. And anybody can read a Ruckman reference Bible. Or uh, what's that other one? Um, 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 the Thompson one. No, nah, not that twit from um, um, the Thompson chain, right? Anyone can read a commentary, 
okay? Anyone can do that. And sit here and put off. Anyone can get one of these computer programs and put in a topic and boom, there's your sermon. Okay, yeah, anyone can do that. Anyone. But see, everything that we speak in this calling, we're going to have a give an account for. Okay? And I'm more afraid of that than what some Jesuit coadjutor devil wants to twist and take out of context. Okay? Think this is easy, huh? Think this is easy? There's much more to it there, son. Much more to it. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Okay? And then go on to read that beautiful about our big mouths. And I've made many mistakes. And you know what, people, brethren? I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to. I'm going to. Okay? Because I'm fallible. This is infallible. Why do you think I tell you all the time, go with me in the scriptures? You know, if there's something I'm reading too fast or something, pa pause the video. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Be a Berean. You think I'm saying that just because it sounds good? Okay? There's, there's more to it than this, brother. There's more to it. And also, uh, more a little bit more on the women, the woman thing, as it were. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 14 on to uh, verses 34 on, and 35. And 1 Corinthians chapter 7. There's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. Other than that! And Christian women. You can't tell a Christian woman from the world does what, the, you know, you're trying to look meek and whatnot on the outside, does it match what's on the inside? Okay? All right? Why do you think it says in Proverbs 31, uh, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Okay? Okay? Don't worry, sisters. We're going to get to us, us males. Don't worry about it. Okay? All right? There's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Okay? <laughs> and if you go on to um, uh, look at verse 38 here while we're at it. So then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. What does that mean? Paul, you know, for us, uh, marriage, there are many things that encompass a marriage. To be a helpmeet unto the husband, the wife is. And also because of lust, that coming together again. And if you are purposely sisters, brothers, if you are purposely withholding yourself from your spouse and the marriage bed, purposely, you're in sin. Okay, but that's one of the reasons for marriage. But Paul says right there in verse 38, okay, look, if you're going to get married, you're not, don't worry, okay? But it's going to be better for you if you don't. That's basically what Paul is telling you. It's like, hey, you, no, no, you, you haven't sinned. It's not, it's not, it's a glorious thing to be married. Yes, but it's a little bit better for you if you don't be married, okay? But, and then again, Jesus himself is like, you know, well, not everybody can receive this. There are eunuchs that are made eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven. He's talking again about a different dispensation. But the teaching is some people out there have no necessity. Okay? I know of one uh, woman who doesn't. Good! I know of also several brothers 
uh, especially a uh, uh, Spaniard brother, who um, I hope is doing well with this, um, wants to remain a virgin. Don't know how he's going to do that, but, you know, more power to him, praise the Lord, you know? Okay? But we just wanted to go to that, get that out of the way, because we are all called to the ministry of reconciliation. We're not all called to this. Okay? Go to 2 Corinthians now, chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay? Now we are switching. Switching here, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Now, see, verse 2 is talking about, it is in the male derivative, okay? All right? But see, it also applies for the sisters in walking according to the word of God. And by our walking according to the scriptures, us walking according to that, they're going to say, wow, that, you know, those are Christians, but you're, you're something different. See? But see, that is, verse 2 is in the male perspective. Why? Because it is of the man that is to handle the word of God to preach and teach. Okay? You, you get me? You see the twofold of verse 2? Okay? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the little g God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we, male, Men, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Now see, also again, men are to be the preachers and teachers. But see, we all, within encompassing the ministry of reconciliation, okay, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. A sister walking according to the scriptures for us today, chaste, meek, and of a quiet spirit, okay, humble, all right, dressing like a lady in the midst of Christian women, okay, <laughs> my wife, okay, uh, that, that gets noticed. They notice that. The world, especially the Christian women, okay, all right, so see, there's more to it than that. The ministry of reconciliation, we are all part of. But see what Paul is doing here? Okay, he's blending the two in this. Addressing how men, because we are the ones who are to handle the word of God. Okay? But also, by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. That also encompasses the entirety of the body of Christ. Also sisters, who are we, the men, are supposed to preach and teach. Okay, we are the man. It's to be of men. But you sisters, walk according to the scriptures. You see how that works? Okay, let's continue. Verse 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Okay, and was that what we were to read to? Yes. Okay. And Jesus Christ can shine forth from a sister. A, a saved woman today of the church of the living God, especially seeking to live her life according to the scriptures in comparison to that. Come on now. One second. I had to shut my window. It's getting cold in here, okay? Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I believe we have addressed the issue of the um, thing about how we're all in the ministry of reconciliation, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 on to verse 31. Okay? Now, 
1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 on to verse 31. Now, ye, more than one, plural, are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, or root, you want to get in the Greek? Okay, apostolos, sent one. Okay? All right? Uh, <laughs> there ain't one female apostle. Okay? First, apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Hmm. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet shew I on to you a more excellent way. We'll get to that one later. Okay? So, there are diversities within the body of Christ. Okay? And, like I said, you, you do your own homework. 1 Timothy chapter 3, and also 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 3, and also in, uh, where is that? In 1 Corinthians 14, 34, under verse 37. Also check out the video done by our brother Alexander. Okay? All right? So there are different callings. But yet we're all called to the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Okay? Now we're going to get into the, the meat of this matter. Okay? Ephesians chapter 4. We want verses 1 on to verse 16. Oh! <gasps> Scripture, right? That's a lot of scripture. Yeah. Yeah. Ephesians 4, verses 1 on to verse 16. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye, plural, walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself, in the bond of peace. And see, we're all one in Christ Jesus. Male, female, uh, Jew, Gentile, okay? There is one body and one capitalist spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And the only way the Lord is in you is if you are of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted. Okay? You come to him on his terms and he saves you. Okay? The Lord lives within you permanently, sealed until the day of redemption, once saved, always saved. Okay? But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Unto men. Now he now that he ascended, what is it? What is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some, some. While we're all, we all are in the ministry of reconciliation, okay? And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Why? To make a name for yourself? To make, to be a career? Huh? So you can be considered in one of, in the upper echelons of Christianity? For the perfecting of the saints, the brethren, the church of the living God. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Hmm. And that's one of the big things. That's the biggest thing. Being called to this calling has nothing to do with you. And when people make it about themselves, oh, I'm not going to name names, then they've missed the mark. 
or have gotten so far off track, it's not even funny. Till we all come in the unity of the faith, and yet in these last days, it's becoming more fractured, fractured, and splintered, and splintered because of the falling away, which is described perfectly in 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 20, or 21, okay? Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him into all things which is the head, even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint, every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So, being in a calling to be called to preach, number one, it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. And it's about serving others. Okay? And the one who calls us to this is the Lord. But see, verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children, babes, okay, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Okay? Deceive. What are qualifications to be, to be called to preach? Hmm? What does Christianity today tell you? Hmm? You know this. You got to go to a Jesuit train, a Jesuit run uh, cemetery school. And it doesn't matter what cemetery school it is. It's overrun and controlled by the Jesuit order. Because virtually every cemetery school out there uses Bibles and all preach against the authorized version. Every, that I'm aware of, cemetery school out there well, I was going to teach you that one God and blah, 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 three persons, and that teaching is as, as sane as Charles Manson. Okay? And see, that comes from Satan. Okay? The cemetery schools, while maybe in their inception, were brought about to uh, strengthen men in order to be preachers. Well, they, the idea was good. Okay, but what they are today, especially in America, it doesn't matter which one. Your precious uh, Pensacola Bible Institute or whatever it is, you know, the Ruckman thing, even that is infiltrated by Jesuits. It doesn't matter. Okay? And what happens? You pay $100,000 to get a piece of paper on the wall that says, man says I'm qualified to do this, and they come out questioning the authorized version of the scriptures, believing in the three-person trinity, and just make, and also, they exalt themselves. Well, I've done this. I've done that. Like the thumbnail. The one on the one side, you know, the celebrity preacher, and then the other one is supposed to be of that of John Bunyan, who was a Calvinist, yes, a Puritan, yes, but um, in prison. In prison. Hmm. But see, now go to Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Okay? Titus chapter 1, verse 6 and verse 11. If any, man, if any be blameless... The husband of one wife, okay? People like to say, well, in order to be a preacher, you have to be married. Okay, okay. Uh, what about Paul? Well, he was, shh. 
Was he not our example? Hmm? Did he not in 1 Corinthians say, um, I wish everyone were as I, meaning unmarried, so he can concentrate on everything, everything he was on the Lord without distraction, okay? Um, there are people out there saying, in order to be a preacher, number one, you got to be married. No, you don't. No, you don't. Not even Paul taught that, okay? But for the bishop and deacon, he brings that up. Yes, he does. But see, Paul himself wished that everyone was like him, not married, okay? So for someone to say that it's a requirement that you be married, no. No, it isn't. Okay? All right? But if any be blameless, comma, the husband of one wife, comma, having children not accused of right or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-will. First thing mentioned. Not soon angry. Working on that. And that comes with time. Okay? Not given to wine. Given to wine. You know, give yourself over one after the other. Okay? No striker. Not given to filthy lucre. There are some people that I don't associate anymore who I question quite greatly whether they are of us. It's like, well, Brad, you've, you're only in this for the money. Are you mad? Are you mad? Are you mad? You're mad, aren't you? Mad, insane. I don't do that for this. <laughs> no, no. No, I've been accused uh, by a Canadian by, of that. And also someone I once loved very much. Yeah. Um, I would do this the way this is done because this is the way the Lord has called me to do it. If I had one subscriber or a thousand, and I hope I don't get a thousand subscribers, okay? But see, what happens is people over time will make it about filthy lucre. Okay? All right, got to watch out for that. And see, the professional Christian preacher that goes to the cemetery school so that they can show a man so they can be a preacher in a phallus house, approved of men, so they can get their six-figure salary. Yeah. But a lover of hospitality... A lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Lover of hospitality. How many of these hotshot, big shot YouTube preachers, if a brother came to their house unannounced, would they welcome them in? Hmm? Would they say, hey, hey, we got a spare bedroom, okay? My, my wife makes some really good biscuits and gravy. Come on in, come on. Or would they be like, oh, sorry, man, sorry. Uh, there's a hotel down the way. It was like, good that you came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Okay? For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Christian pastors and preachers and teachers in the church buildings who go to the Jesuits to get their $100,000 pieces of paper on the wall so they have their credentials. I've asked people before from these, you know, going to these Christian church buildings, you know, well, what's, what's the qualifications of a preacher? Uh, well, they, without exception, they all say, you, gotta, you have the credentials. What are those credentials? You have to have a degree. Really? And they, they follow it up with cute little things. Well, we don't just let anybody in there. Well, effectually, well, think about that. Yes, you have. Anybody who has the money to give unto the Vatican and then get a stamp of approval by Rome herself that he 
or she is qualified to speak in a church building. So yeah, you do let anybody in who had the money and resources to get a, one, a useless degree. Yeah. 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 And of course, these, these people in the church buildings, <laughs> let's see them preach about feminism. Let's see them preach against sodomy and transgenderism. Hmm? Let's see them preach about the Jesuits and Catholicism. Hmm? Let, let's see them preach about being separate from the world, huh? No, no. Say God loves you. God's not angry at you. Don't judge. Because see, if Christians in their little satanic church buildings actually preached from the scriptures, the truth, how many people would be there? So see, in the church buildings, dear friend, they're preaching what people want to hear. Because if they actually preached the truth from the scriptures, oh, their congregation would go way down. Uh, you know, you don't offend the uh, people who are paying you, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, I've been offered money before, but to, to preach, you know, do this, uh, you know, and uh, uh, speak on this, it's like, no thanks, man, go away. You know, who you it's like, how dare you? How dare you? Offering me $1,200 to do a, a sermon or something like that. It's like, go away. Go, your money perish with thee. Okay? All right? This is of the Lord. I speak what the Lord will have me to speak. See, in a church building, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. See? And these are the upper crust, approved of men. And that which is highly esteemed of men is an abomination in the sight of God. Okay? And also Jude, just one verse. Jude 16. Jude does not have chapters. Jude 16. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. What do you want to hear? What do you want me to speak about? And I'll speak about it. Tell me how much God loves me. Speaking, okay. Having, uh, speaking great swelling words, having men's persons and admiration because of advantage. Your feelings don't really mean too much to me. I would rather not hurt feelings, no, but that, that, that's, no. I would rather tell you the truth. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Okay? Some of us, of the Church of the Living God, you need your feelings hurt. Because some, of, some people who are knee de neck deep in their feelings have gone past feelings. Does that make sense? And also, Second uh, Peter chapter two, Second Peter chapter two, verses seventeen on to verse nineteen, and this same guys that we we are talking about, Second Peter chapter two, verses seventeen on to verse nineteen. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. And this is talking about all these Christians in the church buildings. Okay? While well, they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought in bondage. And of course, go to John 7. John 7, verses 14 on to verse 18. John 7, verses 14 on to verse 18. John 7, verses 14 on to verse 18. 
Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? They're saying that about God the Father, right in front of them. What, what school did you go to? I haven't. Well, what give, who gives you this authority? Um, his name is Jesus Christ. Perhaps you should get to know him. Oh, I'm saved. Really? You're saved, huh? Yeah? <laughs> yeah? Sure you are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've been asking. It's like, well, where do you, where do you get the authority? Where, who taught you? Uh, or what school? Did, it's like, no. I, hey, even my enemies would be like, this guy didn't go to no college. Give me a break. Yeah, even my enemies would be like, no, that that guy, no, he, there's no way. Okay, I've been also accused by some people. It's like you've actually been to a college, haven't you? No, I haven't. Okay, I don't even have a good enough diploma. <laughs> I don't. Okay, but yeah. And the Jews marvel, saying, "How know what this man letters, having never learned?" And Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Hmm, interesting. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. And how many of these Christian preachers that we see on YouTube and on other platforms and in your buildings are doing exactly that. Speaking things of flesh, the doctrines of men. Well, the Greek says this, blah, blah, blah. blah. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true. No unrighteousness is in him. In who? In the Lord. Okay? And of course, Acts chapter 4, just one verse. Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, one verse, verse 13, and here it is. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were ig unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. Okay, these guys, they, they clearly not been taught by us, they clearly don't have the credentials, but what they're saying, we can't, there's something to what they're saying. Why? And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And see, people can put off that facade for a while. They can. But over time. See, liars can't hold up a facade for all that long. I mean, there are some uh, jerk Hiles did, but then again, he left little rat droppings along the way, okay? But see, liars can't hold up. Eventually, sooner or later, poof, they shoot themselves in the foot. Sooner or later, they all do. They all do. The test of time. It takes time. Okay? Unless there are some that are brazenly obvious. Okay? Okay? And then there's Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, one verse. Hebrews chapter 5, one verse. Verse 4. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. We're all in the ministry of reconciliation. But we're called to different functions, even though it is your duty as the church of the living God to live according to the scriptures, to be ambassadors. That's for all of us. But there are some of us that are called to different callings within the body of Christ. Okay? All right? And go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I don't know if this was in the notes that I sent you. I think it was. I think it was. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 on to verse 14. And see, Christianity, who requires the approval of men, 
that, okay, unless you're qualified by men and have the credentials, the piece of paper, or authorized by men, how, you know, you're not qualified to do it. And look at how that mentality has come down in other ways. Like I've told you before, at the Woodstock, Illinois, uh, McDonald's, you have to have a, a certificate uh, that you are a food handler. You need a piece of paper to flip a burger. Okay? Okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right? That mentality. Now, granted, you know, if you get your arm broke, you want to go to someone who has enough knowledge to set a bone, to know how deep to go if you're stitching something up. Okay? All right? Yeah, you want them. Yeah, it's like, a, you really know what you're doing? Yes. Yes. The same with those of the Church of the Living God. But who is the one who qualifies who? You see? For who may, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 on to verse 14. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? Now ye are full. Now ye are rich. Ye have reigned as kings without us. And I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. And Christianity's like, oh, you know, God wants nothing for the, but the best for you, the best cars, the best house, the best persons, or whatever. But see, like that thumbnail. Christian celebrity preachers versus someone who is actually called to preach looking out of the bars of a prison because they were in prison for speaking truth. For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. And the Jesuit trained cemeterians, the preachers of today, okay? <laughs> They're not a spectacle of the world. Why? Because they dress like the world. They talk like the world. They are of the world. We as the church of the living God, we're not of that. We are fools for Christ's sake. But ye are wise in Christ. Love the sarcasm here of Paul. Oh, wait, uh, verse 9. Let's finish verse 9. For I think God hath set, us for, set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake. Ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Yeah, the honorable Christian preachers who speak things that you want to hear, who don't, don't offend them, don't scare them. We want their money. I mean, we want to, them to come to the, our building. Like that wicked witch that I encountered on the square the one time. Where do you send them? And I knew where she was going, but it's like, uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures. She's like, yeah, yeah, but they need discipleship. Uh, yes, they do. They get that through the scriptures. You wicked little filthy harlot, get away from me. I didn't say that. In retrospect, I should have probably. Sure would have woken her up. Hopefully it would have turned her to consider a woman out there. Yeah. 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 But whatever. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. But yet, Christian pastors and preachers, right? Got their six-figure uh, salary, secured homes, fridge always full with food, yeah. And labor, working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. And of course, even atheists have said to me, it's like, yeah, 
the Jesus that the Christians are preaching, that sounds almost like something I would want. But then again, it, it's like contrary. It's contradictory, you know? How, how can God love me and send me to hell? God loves me and he weeps over me, but yet he's going to send me to fire to burn forever and ever, but he loves me? Even atheists is like, wait, 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 wait a minute. You said God loves me unconditionally. <laughs> Even atheists figure that one out. But see, that's what Christianity does. Why? Because when they are preaching, it's not because they are concerned about souls. It's their career. They're part of a clique. Their own little denomination. And that's what they're concerned about because it benefits them. Over time, I have preached things that the Lord, Lord had me to preach that I've lost friends, people I thought were friends, help. But there again, this isn't of me. Okay? This is not what, this is not me. This is what the Lord would have me to do. Okay? This is not stuff that I came up with out of my own mind. Okay? Well, the Christians in the buildings are always aware of, okay, can't say that, can't say that, that might offend people. You see? See, Christianity is about you. And Christian preachers are about themselves. But those who are called to preach, okay, it's about the Lord. It's about the Lord. And look what Paul went through. Okay? Now, let's look at some Old Testament examples here of some sendings, okay? All right? Go to Exodus chapter 3. Now, this is a different dispensation, okay? This is a different dispensation. Uh, in Exodus chapter 3, they were still within the dispensation of the patriarchs. Okay, the dispensation ended with the actual Exodus and the blood on the doorposts and the death of the firstborn in Egypt. And when the Lord took the children of Israel out of Egypt, that's when the dispensation of the patriarchs ended. Okay? A lot, it's in a similar fashion, people like, well, the New Testament began with the birth of Jesus. Well, no, it began with the death of Jesus. You read about that in Hebrews chapter 9, okay? People like, well, the dispensation of law began with Moses, the birth of Moses. Uh, no, a, test, a testament is not is of, a, is of force after men are dead. Well, the law was in force while Moses was alive. Yes, but after Moses died, then they were to go into the promised land, see? Okay? All right? But the dispensation of the law actually began with the Exodus. Because after that, then the Lord gives the law, and Moses is there, you know, and then he dies, and then they go into the promised land. Okay? The dispensation of the law. But doctrinally, this is still the dispensation of the patriarchs. Okay? So, Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 10. Let's see a calling, an ascending for our instruction in righteousness. All things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Romans 15, verse 4. Now Moses, verses 1 on verse 10 in Exodus chapter 3. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert, and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire, out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. Moses turned aside to see. Well, most pre people probably would have tucken off, okay? All right? 
And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, very significant. We do not have the time to get into what this is saying, but that is very significant. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. Excuse me, I skipped verse 3. Verse 4 here. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. So the Lord sees the need. And have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. What, you think the Lord isn't going to take care of his own? He sees the need. He hears our cry. Hmm? And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land, out of the land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Onto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Oh, so much instruction in righteousness here. For our instruction in righteousness, the Egyptians are the type of the world. Egypt is a type of the world. Pharaoh is a type of Satan. Okay? Fret not, brethren, sisters. The Lord hears our cries. But see, it's not about us. He still has his, his, his purposes. Who will he save today who he didn't save yesterday? See? Come now, therefore. And I will send thee to a cemetery school where you'll spend $100,000 and get a piece of paper on your wall. And then you can go to your church building and preach what people want to hear. And then you can have a lucrative... Oh, excuse me. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So who is the one who did the sending? Who is the one who did the sending? Okay. And like I say, I got to revert back to what we talked about in the very beginning of this video. Okay. Where I had a uh, part to do with encouraging someone who was not ready. Okay. And remember, Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness and was humbled greatly. Because you go now to Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 16, Moses didn't want to go. Moses didn't want to go. He's like, no, Lord. <laughs> uh, Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse, six, uh, uh, 10 on to verse 16, yes. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I'm not eloquent. I'm not a good speaker. I believe it's referenced that um, that Moses might have even had a speech impediment. Neither heretofore, never nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am of slow speech and of a slow tongue. <laughs> and an example here: any of you who have watched anything the Lord has given me. Uh, yeah, you know that I, I mean, I have pro uh, problems with pronunciation. My dear brother has <laughs> bashed me over the head on how to pronounce certain words. Praise the Lord, I need that. And, you know, I, I still, to this day, struggle with pronunciations. Okay? I, I myself, I'm not a good speaker. Okay? And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? 
Or who maketh thee dumb or deaf or seen? Or the blind, have not I the Lord? It's like, okay, yeah, okay, sure, you can't speak well. I can't, okay? Hey, 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 my enemies, even you, it's like, yeah, Brad's not that good of a speaker, okay? And his pronunciation, ugh, okay? Yeah, I mess up like that. Yes, I do. But see, who hath made man's mouth? Hmm? But see, you get a Jesuit trained cemeterian where you need a dictionary to follow along. Speaking man's words, man's wisdom, right? You know? I would rather listen to someone who stumbles and mumbles, who messes up with pronunciation, who uses words like in a wrong context, you know, uh, for example, uh, behooved. I used behoove wrong in the wrong context before, okay? I would rather give ear to someone like that than some polished, refined, trained cemeterian or a highly distinguished Ruckmanite. Okay? I would rather listen to someone stumbling and mumbling or bumbling over themselves than a professional. A professional. Yeah. Verse 12. Now therefore, go. Go. The Lord called him. And he's like, like Lord, I can't, I can't speak. I'm not. And the Lord's like, uh, 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 Moses, who hath made man's mouth? Hmm? Or who maketh thee deaf, dumb or deaf, or seen or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou ought to, what thou shalt say. Meaning that, okay, Though your speech might be contemptible, but what comes out of that speech, especially from the scripture, you reading the scripture, and the scripture is not contemptible, but you know, like I've talk, I'm talking right now about things that are based on scripture, but are not, I'm not reading the scripture itself at this very moment, obviously, okay? And while I stumble and mumble, but what comes out of that is of the Spirit Himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. See how that works? Because the Spirit identified. You see how that works? Okay? But look at Moses' reaction here. And he said, Oh, my Lord, send, I pray thee, <laughs> by the hand of whom thou wilt send. It's like, okay, pick someone else. Pick someone else. See the reluctance of Moses? Reluctance. Okay? Reluctance of Moses. It's like, no, I'm not, no, no, Lord, I, 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 I don't want to do this. <laughs> Look at how the Lord reacted. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. Okay, Moses, I'm telling you to do something. I told you I'm going to be with your mouth. You don't have to worry about it, okay? I'm here. I'm going to be with you, okay? You, you. You going to mess with me on this? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, It's not, it's not Aaron the Levite thy brother. Okay? All right? I know that he can speak well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at how well he spake about, what is that in Exodus chapter 32? The golden calf? Yeah. And how well he's like, uh, well, I, 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 they gave me the, the gold of their earrings and boop, out came this golden calf. Oh, wow. Huh? <laughs> Brilliant. There's a good speaker for you. <laughs> Aaron and his, his about the golden calf. It's like, and I, I, well, I don't know how. Then all, all of a sudden, whoop, out comes this golden calf. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. There's your good speaker. Yeah. I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put my words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be, uh, be to him instead of God. Verse 17. 
And thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs, because the Jews require a sign. So Moses, in other words, the Lord's like, you're going. Okay? You're going. Of course, the, now Moses, was he being forced? Okay? Was uh, Moses could have been, I'm not going. It's like, okay. And the Lord would have killed him. Okay? The Lord would have killed him. Okay? Gunpoint is not here, as much as some of you would like to argue that. Okay? The Lord's like, you're going to go. You're going to go. Okay? You're going to go. And if Moses still refused, he, you know, you read in this chapter how he, uh, his, the wife went and circumcised the child. Okay? All right? The Lord was going to kill Moses because he hadn't done that. Okay? All right? So, yeah, force is not there. But there again, God called Moses. Moses gave every excuse. It's like, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Okay? The Lord was the one who called. Okay? Now go to Isaiah chapter 61. Okay? Isaiah chapter 61. The last of the Old Testament prophets was not Art Katz. Okay? It's not any of the people today. The last of the Old Testament prophets was who? John the Baptist. Okay? Then Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God himself. God manifest in the flesh. He is like, okay, I'm going to do it. Okay? Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 on verse 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Okay, himself. God himself, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ came and preached. God himself. And of course, uh, Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4. Okay, oh, oh, oh hold your place there, Brad. That's what, okay, so, uh, go back to Isaiah 61. Okay, Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Come on, fingers, work with me, not against me. Luke chapter 4, verses 16 on to verse 20. After the temptation in the wilderness. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, we just looked at this, by the way. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And notice there, verse 20, And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Uh, look at verse 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Uh, verse 2 in Isaiah chapter 61. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. 
and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Why didn't the Lord uh, add that in there? Because he came as the lamb to die, offering the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You read in what uh, the Lord had said. It's like, I, I didn't come here for judgment. At his second coming, that's going to be his judgment. But he came here to die, offering the kingdom of heaven, knowing that they would reject it, but still offering it, or else he wouldn't be a, a righteous God, would he? Or a just God, would he? Okay? All right? Now, Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. How can you know that? How can a man know that he is called to preach? Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 1 and verse 11. Now Peshur, the son of Emir the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then Peshur smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the, in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. And it came to pass on the morrow that Peshur brought forth Jeremiah out to the stocks. Then said Jeremiah unto him, the Lord hath not called thy name, Peshur. Wait, am I reading the right thing? Yes, I am. <clears throat> yes, I am. Uh, then uh, the Lord hath not called thy name, Peshur, but Magor Misabib. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and thine eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captives into Babylon, and shall slay them with the sword. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of the city, and all the labors thereof, and all the precious things thereof, and all the treasures of the kings of Judah will I give into the hand of their enemies, which shall spoil them, and take them, and carry them to Babylon. And thou, Peshur, and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity, and thou shalt come to Babylon, and there shalt thou, and there thou shalt die, and shalt be buried there, thou and all thy friends, to whom thou hast prophesied lies. Now hold on. Jeremiah spake things that were unpopular, okay, and people hated it. People hated him. He spake the truth, but see the prophets, the other, the false prophets, were preaching what the people wanted to hear. Jeremiah would say, hey, this is God's punishment. We deserve worse. Submit to God's punishment. Surrender, and it will go well with you. But we're going to be punished. But the others are like, Jeremiah is weakening people. He's telling us to submit. we got to fight, fight, fight. And because they fought, 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 the captivity was worse. Okay? All right? And about Jeremiah, we have to remember. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 on to verse 10. Hold your place here because we're coming back. Jeremiah 1, verses 4 on to verse 10. The word, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. I knew thou to call the preach at 11 years old. Shut up. No. I can guarantee you at this time, uh, Jeremiah was well past probably even 30. Okay? Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Now, see, people will t twist that and say, Well, see, Jeremiah said he was a child. It's like, child, uh, a novice, not knowing many things. Okay? All right? Weak, dependent. It doesn't mean that he was a child such as an adolescent. No, no. A dependent, weak child who needed his father. Okay? Which is exactly what the Lord said. And look at what he said. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. 
Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to, and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. And see, what the Lord said to him, Say not, I am a child. It's not that he was like a teenager or a 12-year-old or anything nonsense like that. No, no. It's like, Lord, I'm not qualified to do this. I, 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 I need, I, I don't know how to put one foot forward without help. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about a specific age. Okay? All right? And we as children of the Lord, we are dependent on the Lord for this. See? That's how that works. Okay? Be careful with people who will also go to Jeremiah and say, well, see, see, he knew that he was called to preach the gospel 11 years old. When again, you don't know what side of your drawers is supposed to face front. No, the child there that Jeremiah was talking about was like, I, 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 I can't do it. I need your help. I'm a child. I can't, I can't figure things out for myself. And the Lord's like, hey, okay, I'm with you. I'm your father. I'm with you. Okay? Go back to Jeremiah chapter 20. Picking up at verse 7. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision daily. Moses, the same thing. It's like, okay, Lord, I did what you said. I speak, I spake on the Pharaoh. And look, he, it made it worse, right? You speak in the name of the Lord today. It's like, wow, it, I, it, it's made, it's been worse, right? Look at what's happening to me, Lord. Okay? But let's keep reading. For I heard the defaming of many. Fear on, on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watch for my halting, saying, Peradventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take out take our revenge on him. Yeah, and our enemies. It's like they, they watch everything. It's like our enemies who will watch everything that we do in its entirety to find one little chink in the armor to exploit it. Even though, you, yes, they will. Our enemies will watch the videos in their entirety. Yes, but they're not doing it to grow in order to help others to be enriched in the faith. No, they're looking. Oh, oh, he said that. No, okay. Oh, he said that. Might be that. Might be something. You know, that's why they do that. Okay, that's why they do that. Same thing here. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble. Oh, wait, wait, I skipped that. Okay, I skipped some. Excuse me. Excuse me, I skipped some. Okay, verse 9. I'm sorry. Verse 9. I was skipped over this. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Brother? But his word was in mine heart, as a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary with forbearing. I could not stay. Hmm. Sorry for me uh, skipping that. Sorry for me skipping verse 9. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire. You've been in a situation where your fire, your brother in witnessing? Hmm? That fire, that burning. Which is not heartburn or indigestion, but that fire in your heart. You're like, I don't want to speak it. I don't want to start in trouble. The Lord's like, hey, genius, I put you in this situation. You are my ambassador. Open your mouth and speak what I have given you. And it's not this charismatic nonsense. It's not that. Okay, we are called... To be ambassadors, and we are supposed to search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. And also, too, I don't care if you're going out to get the mail. 
or taking out the trash, always carry a sword with you. Because you never know when the Lord's going to open up a situation where he's going to use you as his ambassador. He needs a sword on you. Okay? Okay? Even you sisters, you encounter other women. Okay? You encounter other women. All right? Who are dressed like men, like whores, and are of this world, and they're offended at you because you're a lady dressed meekness and meekness and are of a quiet spirit, okay? But have a sword on you, okay? Have a sword on you because you never know when the Lord is going to use you or wants to use you, okay? But that burning, that burning, okay? At one, more, at one point, it's like, I just don't want to do this. I don't want to mess up. But yet, that overwhelming burning. Well, everything in you, everything in your flesh is saying, no, don't do it. Don't, 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 don't. Your flesh is actually, you know, your flesh that Satan uses to guide you into going into sin. But see, when you're going to speak something of the war of the Lord from his word, the authorized version of the scriptures, your flesh is like, no, 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 don't, don't. Fall back. Don't worry about it. They, they'll be, no, that's not your problem. But yet, that burning, speak. Speak. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Speak. And when you speak, who's glorified? Is it you because you lay down a sermon on someone, bragging about, boasting all your, your well, I, I can't tell you, brethren, how many times I've been dealt with some of these Christian pastor, pastors, and every single time, I have a degree, okay? You just say you read your Bible, and that makes you qualified? <laughs> and the one guy, it's like, you went to the Catholics. And he's like, um, I went to Moody. Who do you think runs Moody, pal? The Jesuit order. You were trained by Jesuits. You might as well be a Jesuit. Oh, boy, he didn't like that. And unfortunately, yes, I lost my cool in that moment. Yeah, I did. I did. You know, that wears on you after a while. You run into these pastors. It's like, well, I'm a pastor. It's like, oh. Oh, you know, I, Lord has called me to preach, you know. Say, so, oh, really? Where'd you go to school? <laughs> okay, I don't, I, I'm not. Well, how do you know you're qualified? Uh, because the Lord is the one who has called me. And he has verified it by the fruit that has come from what he has given me. Okay? And it's not glorifying to me, but to the Lord. Then talking to, like the one guy down there, what happened? He got offended, and he rubbed in my face of his degree. And it's like, dude, do you, you, you're lost. Look at you. You're, you're rubbing in my face your degree. You know, you might as well be a Catholic. You might be as well be a Jesuit. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh. see? See? But that burning, that burning, well, everything in your flesh, your flesh, which usually, call, which is the culprit that wants you to do things contrary to the word, but when it comes to actually speaking the truth of God's words, God's words, that is nothing to you except the reproach, your flesh is like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. But that burning, speak the word. I put you here because of such. See? Now, verse 10. For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side, report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watch for my halting, saying, Peradventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one. Therefore my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper, for their everlasting confusion shall be never be forgotten, and God is not the author of confusion. And of course, Amos chapter 7, Amos chapter 7, 
Amos chapter 7. Amos chapter 7, verses 14 on to verse 15. Then answered Amos. And uh, well, let's read um, a little bit. Um, verses 12 on to verse 15. Because Amos was called to preach the truth. Well, what did this person say? Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread and prophesy, prophesy there. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. Now go preach over there, but don't preach here, because the king the, you know, doesn't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. Neither was I a prophet's son. But I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said unto me, Go prophesy unto my people Israel. And see, Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. Those who are actually called of the Lord to a position of preaching, who are actually saved, okay, who are actually saved, there's always a resilience. There's a resilience, excuse me, wrong word. See? See? A reluctance. See, I used the wrong word. Okay, a reluctance, a resistance. Brethren, I knew, I had known, suspected at least for a while that this was something that the Lord called me to do, but I fought him on it. There was no way because of the responsibility. This, the, you know, like I, we looked at, I'm going to have to stand before the Lord and give an account for everything I said, for everything I taught. Okay? Okay? God forbid this be something of my own. Okay? God forbid. All right? I'm going to have to give. I have been, I've been given a responsibility like this. And I'm going to have to stand before the Lord at, at, at the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for this? Okay? <laughs> okay? This is a major responsibility. It is. And yes, anyone can turn on a computer, a microphone, and read a whole bunch of books, and get a computer program, and just go off of that, and do whatever, and even use the scriptures. Okay? Yes. Yes. But someone was actually called. Like Moses. <laughs> like Jeremiah. Okay? I want to do this. And brethren, I fought the Lord. I fought the Lord. And I paid a heavy price. And the Lord took everything away. Everything out of the way, I should say. And brought me to that brink. It's like, Brad, I've called you to something. And, you know, I resisted. I resisted. I resisted. And then finally the Lord's like, okay, Brad. And I mean, I could have said no, still could have said no, but we wouldn't be where we are today. We wouldn't be where we are today if I had continued to reject what the Lord had called me to do. And I had, a, I had an option, of course. But the Lord put it for was, okay, you either do what I tell you or continue on and your life is going to be a disaster from here on out. And then I finally submit. It's like, okay, Lord, this is what you want me to do? Okay. Okay. I don't want to do it. I don't want that responsibility. And remember, I wasn't forced. 
But the Lord sure did make it pretty difficult to say no after a while. It's like, okay, Brad, I'm going to put you in a position where you basically have no choice. I did have a choice. I did have a choice. But it's like, it's like you either do what I have called you to do or reject that and watch your life and your marriage go down the toilet. And I gave up. And here we are today. But see, the false convert, the one who does this just because they want to glorify themselves. See, those who are truly called to this position, they, they don't want to do it. They say, well, I called the priest from 11 years old. Or at 16, I was ordained. A new, new uh, what is it? IFB bath. Baptist pastor. Say, like, yeah, yeah, I knew from 16 this was going to be my career. Uh, excuse me, my calling. Jeremiah 23, verses 18 on to verse 22. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, and until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. That's a mark of someone, of a false prophet right there. That they run to be in the limelight. That they run to be noticed. That they run and have 50 channels on every single social media site that there is. They run. It's like, hey, look at me, look at me. <laughs> they run. When someone who is actually legitimately called to this position, it's like, no, 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 let him do it, let him do it. No, the Lord's like, go! <laughs> okay? But no, the false prophet's like, here I am, here I am, look at me, look at me. Oh, you don't pay, okay, here, here, let me, you know, buy my merchandise. Okay? Yeah, buy my merchandise. Check out my 50 channels on other websites. Or on other social platforms. They run. But those who are genuinely called. <laughs> Lord, send him. I'm calling you. And be careful. And the Lord makes it bad enough to for in you. And then you're like... You just won't refuse. It's like the Lord be like, fine, fine. I'll send someone else. I'll send someone else for what I wanted you to do. But since you won't do what I wanted you to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you and set you there. And you won't be anything for me. You'll be with me in heaven, yes. But I wanted you to do this. But you refused, no matter how difficult I made it for you. But yet you refused? Fine. Here. Fine. Here. Here you are. There you will be. Well, at least I'll be in heaven. But the Lord called you to be his ambassador. See? There's reluctance. There's resistance to it. All the false prophet runs up, it's like, here I am. <laughs> but if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. And look at these Trinitarians, these easy believers and devils. Those who claim to be an enemy of Rome, but yet support one of their biggest days and seek the, the praises of men.
And if they had stood in my counsel, they would have turned them. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. And who'd been the turning? The Lord, of course. But see, it's not about us. And see, most of Christianity, these Christian preachers, especially the ones here on YouTube, it's all about them. It's all about them. It ain't about them. If they were of the Lord, it's not about them. It's about the Lord. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 17. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. What does this mean? Paul, Saul, who was then Saul. He took those of the Church of the Living God and held them off to prison to eventually be killed. So he was responsible in the killing of those of the Church of the Living God. But see, if God took a murderer and made him a messenger, what, you think you're so bad that he can't save you? Now unto the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And you know about Paul, about Paul, go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Not Colossians, Brad. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 2 on to verse 6. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we, the church of the living God, are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. How many of these preachers are the exact opposite? I have a half a million subscribers. <laughs> I have a half a million subscribers. I feel like Paul for all that I've led to the Lord. Yeah, rub it in my face a little bit, huh? Yeah. Look at what I've done. I've been doing this for many years. Okay? I may, I give Hollywood production type material. Look at me. What you see is what you get. How many of these preachers can say that in reality? you see is what you get how do you know what with these guys who have half a million subscribers that have people lined up to hear them speak that nonsense that's sending them to hell hmm? what are they like when it's the four walls the ceiling and the floor and just the lord what are they like hmm? you don't know that of me that's true that's true. But see, if you were to meet me, and incidentally, if I were to meet like my good friend from England, uh, one of us would die. <laughs> I don't want to meet him. <laughs> because if all of a sudden, uh, KJV, I hear that from behind me and I see that guy, it's like, oh, great. Now we're going to have a fight unto the death. Because if that were to happen, there'd only be one reason why that guy would be here, and that would be to kill me. So I'd have to try to kill him before he killed me. <laughs> Same with like anybody of my uh, these enemies who work for the Vatican. You know? They come ac across to you, and it's like, you realize, it's like, oh boy. Oh boy. You know? But like I said, 
my brother from New Jersey, were to suddenly, all of a sudden, appear in our door. Brother, come, come on in. Come on, hey baby. And she'd be like, wow, hi. What, you hungry? <laughs> you know? You know, one of our brethren? You know, come here. It's like, hey. Wasn't exp hey, come on in. Come on in. Yeah, come in. Hey, baby, look who is. Oh, hi. You hungry? Let's make some tea. Come on, sit down. You know? This is our house. It's yours, too, because you are our brother. Okay? Or if even a sister. Okay? That would be a little awkward. I, I will admit, that would be a little awkward. Um, because if a sister were to come here... Uh, there would be never a chance that I and even a saved sister would be left alone without my wife. Okay, that would, so, I mean, but even thus, even thus, a sister had a situation where uh, her life as whatever, didn't have a husband or whatever, was so horrible that she had to get out of there. And it's like, you know, Brother Brad, I, I came here, you know, it's like, you know, fine, fine, we got a guest bedroom. Fine, fine. But like I said, in such a situation, it's like there would never be one moment where it would be me and that sister alone without my wife present. Even though we would all be saved, you still that you just don't do that. You just don't do that. Okay? You just don't do that. Okay? But open to hospitality. Okay? Open to hospitality. Verse 4. Got a little off, a little long-winded there, but... Verse 4, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I am more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. Yeah, he was trained by Gamaliel. Uh, it is, you could theorize that Paul would have probably become one of the, uh, the next high priest. Okay? So he had all the credentials concerning zeal, persecuting the Christians. Persecuting the church. You weren't expecting that, were you? Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ, we were supposed to read only to verse 6 because Paul had all the cred credentials. But let's keep reading. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things, not just that thing of his religiosity that he had, but all things. Anything that the world, the flesh, the devil would offer, that praise of men, all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Verses 10 on to verse 17. For do I now persuade men or God? Is this ministry of yours? Is it for God or for you? Hmm? Look at me, look at me. And how many are doing that? Do I, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, 
how that beyond measure I persecuted the Christians. You were probably expecting that one, didn't you? Weren't you? Yeah. I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, the grace of the cross, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately, I went to a Jesuit cemetery school. Immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went on into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Why is that so significant? Because he didn't go to man. What did he do? Paul already had an extensive knowledge of the scriptures because he was brought up in the law. But see, he had to go aside and spend time by himself with the Lord. And the Lord, as we already looked at at the beginning of this video, opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And Paul, who was greatly already learned in the scriptures, the Lord in him, guiding him now into all truth in the scriptures about himself within the scriptures. So Paul took time away and got with the Lord. And the Lord prepared him. Now right away after his conversion, yes, he went and preached. Yes, he did. You read about that in the book of Acts. But then he went away for a while to, for the Lord to prepare him. Okay? And see, that's another thing. Someone who newly gets saved, it's like, well, I, I feel, you know, you're newly saved. I feel I've been called to preach the gospel. So, okay, now i got to go to a Jesuit cemetery school? That, that doesn't come from the Lord. The Lord says, come unto me. And the, the cemetery schools are not of the Lord. They are not, okay? Now, in Acts chapter 26... Gotta be concerned for time here. We read about the thing of Damascus, the Damascus Road, how the Lord called Paul, uh, Saul, and how Paul was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but he did what the Lord said. Okay, uh, brother, who I sent the notes to, I I am going to skip a little here for time's sake because it's already at two and a half hours almost. But go to First Corinthians chapter one. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17. Go to the close of the chapter. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, like from a cemetery school, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. You listen to some of these Christian preachers with their uh, hyperbole and their her hermeneutics, whoever whom Herman is, and their exegesis and all their... <laughs> For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, not being saved, are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. Yes, and the crucifixion is what? Death. Death. Okay? But unto them which are called, called, the way of the cross, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than man. men. Foolishness, who calls what the, anything foolish, uh, foolish of God? The world. Okay? 
and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Why? Because they have a greater stumbling block. I got the degree. I'm of noble birth. My ancestors built this country. Look at me. Rather than some lowly little beggar who was pulled out of the dunghill. Because remember, God's a God of the little guy. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. The God, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. And how many of these preachers today are glorying in their flesh? How many? Look at me. Look at my, the size of my ministry. I, I have this credential and I, I've done this. I'm like Paul. You know, I've let so many. Shut up. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 5. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. W uh, what wisdom is he talking about? Because the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. He's talking about man's wisdom, the wisdom that comes from this world, which is first, what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? He's talking about what wisdom there? Not the wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, but the wisdom of this world. Yes. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Who saved? Who has been, who has died to this world, to themselves? Okay, that's what Paul's saying there. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit, capital S, and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And look at all these people that, in the church buildings, which boast to you of their credentials, and the YouTube guys, and all the numbers. That's God a little guy. God's got a little guy. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 14 on to verse 23. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. So see, do you preach the gospel? Do you live of the gospel when this is off and it's just you, the Lord, the four walls, the ceiling, and the floor. Hmm? Yes, because people can speak of, from the truth of the scriptures, but do they live it when no one's looking? But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be done so unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory in void. Paul chose to work with his hands. And if you were to read this, yes, yes, okay. Um, that, yeah, we who live of the gospel, uh, preach the gospel, are ordained to live of the gospel. But Paul chose to do that, to be an example, okay. But yes, okay, yeah, there is such a thing of someone doing this and the Lord providing for them through this, okay? Paul chose not to do that, okay? But let's continue. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Remember what we read in Jeremiah? For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me, 
What is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. Meaning, he submitted himself unto the Lord that the Lord could use him how he, the Lord, saw fit. Okay? Unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law as without law. Be not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made by who? The Lord. All things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for my ministry's sake. Oh, for my career's sake for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. And yes, Paul talks about my ministry. Yes, but so many people, and I hear, I've heard of it quite often before, about people, they brand, well, this is my ministry. This is my calling. This is my, 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 I, 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 me, me, me. This. First John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. We're almost done. I only had to skip one thing about in the book of Acts. 1 John chapter 3, verses 18 on to verse 24. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Walk your talk. Like I said, Someone can do a really good sermon or whatever through the authorized version of the scriptures because the scripture is the truth. The scriptures speak for themselves. Yes, but what we don't see, that fruit that comes of that, okay? Like I said, what you see here is what you get. And if you were to ever meet me, you would say, oh, yeah, wow, you are exactly like that probably put some of you off that the one that you're looking at is the one you would meet in public and see in private. Okay? How do we know about some of these, especially these King James Bible believing Christians? These guys who are in the buildings, huh? Uh, these guys who are in the buildings? Yeah. Yeah. They rub their accomplishments in your face. Their degrees. Yeah. Yeah. A little pride there. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Yes, and we can't trust our own hearts, okay? For the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who doth know it? I, the Lord, know it and try the hearts of men. That's in Jeremiah, what, 17, 9, and 10. I just butchered that, okay? Uh, someone correct me on that. Uh, to, what is that, 2.30 something? Okay, because I'm writing it down, 2.30 something, 2.32. Okay, I don't want to do that. If I do that, I'm going to put it in the description box. But let's continue, okay? And remember that burning in the heart that we looked at, at in Jeremiah? Okay? Beloved, if our heart condemn us, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is the commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And, there, and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. And of course, we are sealed until the day of redemption. But see, not even Paul, 20, uh, not even Paul, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, would walk in the Spirit. Okay? Or else he would have been sinless. And what do you do with Romans chapter 7? Okay? But see, that we love one another. It's hate to withhold truth from someone. 
It's hate to say just believe without having scriptural repentance or, or being broken or, you know, well, yeah, I did this, but it was someone else's fault. And, you know, prayer is a work, repentance is a work, okay? Or you can utter something like a robot. And what the buildings, what Christianity teaches and preaches is hate. And see, that's the thing. You're called to preach. It's a death to everything you are. Because not only is your life in a public scrutiny for what they can see, out there and in here, like I said, there are you know there are things that I'm going to learn of you at the judgment seat of, seat of Christ only, and you know hey, that's not a detriment of uh, 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 friendship or fellowship, no. But you know, like for example, my best friend and I, we can talk about anything, but there are certain things of him that I'm only unfortunately going to probably learn about at the judgment seat of Christ. But see, that doesn't affect our fellowship or friendship, okay? But there are just certain things, you know. You, just, I mean, it's not that it's a distrust in one another. There are just certain things. Same with all of you. There are things that you're going to learn of me at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? But see, that's not a detriment to fellowship or friendship or anything like that. No, that's just how it is. It's not a, well, that's, you know. You know, there are things like, you know, brother, I, I'd rather not talk about that part of it of my life with you, if that's what it's like, oh, sure, sure, brother, okay, let's continue, you know? And that's it, the way it is. But at the judgment seat of Christ, you'll be like, oh, wow, didn't know that. Oh, oh where well, they get a load of me, right? And see, that's the whole point of this position that the Lord has called you to. If this is what he is. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And devils out there want to twist this and say charity ought to be love. Well, the love is love, right? And see, this love is love, uh, then why not be a sodomite and love a man? I saw the other day that devil uh, Joe Rogan saying, well, why would God create guys who love other guys? And he was talking to that Matt Walsh guy, and that my, Matt Walsh guy was just sitting there kind of like, uh, 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 before the mighty Joe Rogan. And it's like, God didn't create anyone gay. That's Harris. That's a lie. No. 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 But see, well, love is love, right? And they come to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and they say it ought to be love. Charity is self-sacrifice. Charity is not in and of itself liberty. Our liberty as the church of the living God extends from Christ's charity, yes. But charity and liberty are two different things, you devil. And that's what this is about. Self-sacrifice. Spending upwards to three hours doing this. The hours it takes to research. The emails, the threats, the, the, the work outside. There's much more to it. In comparison to what all this encompasses, this is actually the easier part. Even though... You know, going through the scriptures and whatnot. That takes a lot of time. You know, not cheating and using the computer program. But, you know, yes, this takes labor. Searching the scripture. Comparing scripture with scripture. But in the whole package of being called to this. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity. Self-sacrifice. Okay? I am become as a sounding, as sounding brass, or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, 
and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And some people have this false charity, like, oh, here, I'll give, and they take a selfie or something here, I'll, I'll give you $20 or I'll give you, okay, great, but a charity, this is what? Self-sacrifice, sacrifice of your precious time, of your comfort zone, to be there for a brother or sister, okay? To give unto others, however it may be. It may be like this, sure, or it may be your time, it may be a shoulder for someone to snot on, okay, whatever. But it's a self-sacrifice. That's the main, besides, you know, the Lord's the one who puts you in this position. Yes, he is. But that requires self-sacrifice. That requires charity on your part. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, Paul addresses that very thing we just said, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Self-sacrifice. See, he's mentioning all these things, but if you're not doing it out of a concern for other people, okay, sacrificing your time, your comfort, your stuff, in order to help not, uh, another. Self-sacrifice. And you do that because of love. Yes, you do that because of love. But remember, love is not charity, nor is charity love. Okay? There are aspects in that of both, yes. But in and of themselves, charity is self-sacrifice. You can look, look at uh, Amnon and Tamar. Okay? He loved his half-sister. And after he did what he did, he hated her. Yeah, love is love, isn't it? Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. <laughs> well, hey, I've been there. I've been there. here. I have the degree. I've saved more people than Paul. Look at my glowing ministry. Look at my houses and my cars and my suits and all of this stuff. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Speaketh not her own. And when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Mm -hmm. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things. Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Believeth all things doesn't mean that you believe like, okay, in what Buddha taught. Or, no, you're willing to give people the benefit of a doubt until they stomp on your foot. Okay? You got to be cautious of that, which has um, backfired on me. But see, I would rather give someone a chance and then have them prove to me it's like, oh, wow, you're a devil. And yeah. But see, if you don't do that, what happens? Nothing. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And let's read verse 9. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. And verse 10. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So, how do you know if you've been called to preach? The Lord will confirm it to you. Um, things for yourself, you, do, you, do you want, are you rushing to be in the limelight? <laughs> do you know what kind of a tax I've had myself, and I'm nothing. I'm nobody. Praise the Lord. I don't even have 500 subscribers. Praise the Lord. Okay? Praise the Lord. All right? I'm a small nobody who the algorithm, like many other brethren, who is working against. Okay? The attacks. All right? The joys of seeing brethren grow. 
the encouragement that you hear from brethren who have less than you, and yet the Lord is providing for them beautifully. It's charity. It's a self-sacrifice. And that's, that's what is at the heart of this position, being called to preach. It's not about you. It's not about how you're going to look. It's about the Lord, about Him being glorified, His Word being glorified, how you're going to be there for others at your expense. And that's what it's about. But see, Christianity, it's about you. you got to get the credentials, and then you put it in people's faces. You start out with charity, self-sacrifice, and then you're in this for a while, and then you forget, and then it's all about you. Look at you. That's why I never, ever want to become well-known or big. I hope not. I hope not. Because I have seen one too many examples of those who have become successful and it goes to their head. And I don't want to be like that. So, have you been called to preach? <laughs> we certainly need all hands on deck. We do. But why do you want to do it? For his glory or for yours? That's going to be it for this video. Thank you, brother, uh, who asked this question. You know who you are. Um, and remember... We are all called to the ministry of reconciliation. We're not all. There are different functions for us of the body of Christ, the church of the living God, okay? There are, but we're not all called to the same calling. But you are all, all of you who are of the church of the living God, you are all called to be ambassadors for the Lord. Man, woman, Republican, Democrat, white, black, okay? It doesn't matter. You're all called to be examples, ambassadors. How do you do that? Live your life according to this. Not according to the precept of men or the traditions of men or what makes you feel good. Live your life according to this. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for all of you who help us and pray for us. We pray for so many of you. We love you. Um, this might be the last video for this week. It might be. Got some things going on this week. We will see. But um, anyway, going to get this uploaded. Thank you for watching this if you do. We love you. And we'll see you in the next video.